uh, if I may skip forward uh, from those beginnings, that emphasis with you know veritas and pietas, uh, social responsibility as well as truth, um, that um, in the year 1980, Father Arupe called a group of 20 Jesuits to Rome for a week of consultation on the Jesuit apostolate of Jesuit education. I happened to be one of them invited. And during the course of the week, Father Arupe raised the question, what do you see happening? What are the needs that really exist? We discussed many topics. Uh, we discussed topics that were financial. We discussed topics that had to do with um, uh, varied types of cultural needs in terms of enculturation. We discussed issues of justice in curriculum, etc. But two needs really came through very strongly at the end. Namely, people said what we need is a contemporary identity statement of what Jesuit education should be today. Whereas the Ratio Studiorum was a great help at the end of the 16th century, and it really worked for uh, centuries, the world has changed such today that we really do need a contemporary statement that will make sense and will be challenging so that we can really grow. And secondly, people said, <laughs> it's a great idea that you got us here, but it's the first time in God knows how long a group of educators has really sat down with the general of the society. Would it be possible, in effect, to set up some sort of an ongoing group that would work with the Secretary of Education for the society and the general uh, and meeting regularly in order to keep this communication and development going? Father Arupe agreed to both. He established the International Commission on the Apostolate of General Jesuit Education, and he gave them their first uh, mandate was to develop a contemporary identity statement on Jesuit education. That group worked, and it was a small group, uh, one person from each continent, so there were six people plus the Secretary of Education. It was meant to be a working group, that's why I was on a huge committee. Um, and uh, the group worked through six drafts on this statement. The first one was utterly horrendous. It looked like a third-rate master's thesis. Um, gradually, we began to develop things that made sense and began to put things together. By the time we reached the fourth draft, we said, OK, it's in decent shape. Let's send it out. We sent it out to provincials around the world, asking that they consult with people in education in their provinces for feedback. What did people like? What did they not like? What suggestions did they have for additions, for changes, for corrections, whatever? We got that feedback. We developed the fifth draft, sent that out, same feedback, and we then went on and presented the text to the new general at the time in 1986, Father Kovenbach. Father Kovenbach was very pleased with this document and titles The Characteristics of Jesuit Education. And while the initial focus as the document evolved was more at the level of Jesuit basic education, elementary, secondary, etc., um, in the letter, Father uh, Kovenbach decided that he would adopt this document as his own and make it the society's official statement. He sent a cover letter with the text of this document in which he said, uh, this is uh, an official statement of what we are and should be in Jesuit education. Secondly, I think I agree that it needs to be enculturated, um, and therefore it needs an adaptation for various parts of the world and different cultures. Uh, but I believe that this document will be useful and should be adapted for Jesuit higher education, for Jesuit social ministries, communications, etc., across the board, because it really presents a structure that is easily uh, recognized and adaptable. That uh, development, that publication, went all around the world, and there were translations made of this document initially into 19 languages. Um, the in Indian Assistancy, the South Asian Assistancy, was the first one 
that actually developed an adaptation for higher education, for their 27 uh, Jesuit colleges and universities. Uh, and it was done within the framework of a non-predominantly Christian clientele, teaching faculty, etc., but maintaining the same values and putting the identity on the line. Uh, in, in time, the presidents of uh, the Jesuit universities of Latin America in their organization, AUSHAL, which is a counterpart for AJCU, the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities in the United States, uh, took about five years, but they developed their version of the characteristics of Jesuit education for the Jesuit universities in Latin America entitled Desafios de América Latina y Propuestas Educativas, um, which has become, for them, in effect, their guiding identity document, etc. Uh, most recently, in the United States, AJCU, working with the Jesuit provincials over the course of about three years, have developed a similar document um, entitled Communal Reflection on the Jesuit Mission in Higher Education a way of proceeding. And in it, they list the characteristics of uh, Jesuit ed higher education uh, as their major section in, in development of this document. So this development on identity is proceeding. But when it came out initially, we began to get feedback in the annual letters at the Curia. And um, the, re the reactions were very positive. People said, Thank you, because it gives us a clarity about what we really want to be doing. It establishes some priorities. It, it's something that's understandable. We're able to share this with faculty, with students, with alumni, etc., and it is a real help. 